Episode 29, Fear of Offending Asians, originally posted March 21, 2013. I don't really know what it is that makes me gravitate towards the more obscure characters in the toy line. For some reason, I just find them infinitely more interesting than the more popular ones. Or maybe it's just because we hardly know anything about them that it leaves more to the imagination, making them more your character to do as you would. When it comes to the Masters of the Universe main vintage line, aside from the last minute characters thrown in towards the end, I don't think anyone else comes as close to obscurity as Jitsu. The evil master of martial arts was part of the third series of Masters of the Universe introduced in 1984. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that with his oversized metallic chopping hand, he was made to be the counter of the heroic warrior Fisto. Unlike Fisto, however, Jitsu sort of fizzled out from the gate. He only had one appearance in the original Filmation cartoon, one speaking line, and was never even mentioned by name. In fact, in the original Animation Bible, he was referred to not as Jitsu, but with the generic name Chopper. After that, he was never shown again. In the 2002 series reboot, he fared even worse, as he didn't even appear in that one at all. And because of this, he didn't have any representation in the accompanying toy line, which kinda sucked, because that series and toy line is best known for all the interesting redesigns done to all the characters by the very talented toy designers, the Four Horsemen. So initially, it seemed that we would be deprived of seeing what an updated version of Jitsu would look like. The popular belief is that the Jitsu character was avoided like the plague in both cartoon series and other media because Mattel was afraid that he would be seen as an offensive Asian stereotype. Well, as far as I'm concerned, all I cared about was that his toy had this cool spring-loaded chopping gimmick. I couldn't care less about him possibly being offensive. And I'm Asian. If anything, I was glad that we were getting some sort of representation in the Masters line. Anyway, lucky for us Jitsu fans, after the 2002 toy line was cancelled, another toy company, NECA, decided to continue the line with the help of the Four Horsemen. Although they were not allowed to legally make action figures, they were given clearance by Mattel to make a line of statues that would be compatible in size with the existing toys. So with the new static action figure, or Staction line, they set out to do redesigns of characters that weren't included in the original toy line, including Jitsu. And boy, did they go to town on this guy. Unhampered by the usual restrictions and safety regulations that go with toy manufacturing, they produced an amazing modernized rendition of Jitsu that to this day sells for a high price on eBay. That is, if you ever find one. I for one was lucky enough to find a decently priced one and he remains one of my most prized items in my collection. But aside from being a simply awesome interpretation of Jitsu, this staction gave us more. For the first time, we got an official backstory to Jitsu and it's a good one. As taken from the back of the staction card, if there is one thing the dreaded Skeletor relishes more than defeating his enemies, it is enslaving them. No one of his warriors knows this better than the man known as Jitsu. Once a ruler of a peaceful society in the Far East, Skeletor's armies decimated his people after he would not craft weapons for the Dark Armies. Anxious to demean his peaceful legacy, Skeletor fused the man with an ancient artifact called the Dragon's Claw, a massive gauntlet that possesses its wearer and is capable of splitting stone. As Eternians flee in terror from his bloody campaign, little do they know a lost soul watches in terror and sadness through the general's blood-red eyes. How's that for adding depth to a rather obscure character? His tragic fate endeared me even more to Jitsu, and this definitely made him stand out amongst Skeletor's evil warriors. But it didn't stop there. When the Masters of the Universe Classics line started in 2008, I never imagined that they would release a Jitsu figure. But the line proved to last longer than anyone expected, and on its fifth year, we finally got a Classics Jitsu. While this version lacked most of the hyper-designed details of the staction that made it so great, it still does a commendable job modernizing the original vintage figure and again was worth the wait. Although I do wish they included an alternate head similar to the staction design with a longer ponytail and possessed demonic red eyes. Unfortunately, in the Classics universe, Jitsu is no longer that tragically enslaved character established in the Staction bio. Instead, we get this. Real name, Chopper. An intergalactic bandit, Jitsu was broken out of prison star by Keldor during the Great Unrest. In gratitude, he agreed to serve the evil Lord of Destruction and stayed with him even after Keldor's transformation into Skeletor. As a master of several forms of martial arts, Jitsu was often on the front line in battle against Randor and his masters. 
During the Battle of Gratori Bridge, he was wounded by his archenemy Fisto and had his hand replaced with a golden robotic implant by Triclops. After Skeletor left Eternia for the stars, Jitsu took over Snake Mountain, ruling it with an iron fist. As deadly as he is silent, Jitsu uses his chopping power to get his evil way. While not as good as the Staction bio, they did manage to do a couple cool things. First, they paid homage to his roots by bringing back the name Chopper. Although I would have preferred a more Asian name, I do appreciate a nod to his history. And second, they made him the new ruler of Snake Mountain after Skeletor apparently leaves for the stars, or in other words, goes off to star in the disastrous attempt of a cartoon reboot in the early 90s called The New Adventures of He-Man. And speaking of Chopper, when Mattel officially ended the Classics run around 2016, another company, Super 7, continued the Classics line for a few more years with Mattel's blessings. And in 2018, they actually produced a Filmation-style JIT, I mean Chopper. How cool is that? Anyway, after the release and shelving of Jitsu in the original line, it seemed that it didn't take long for Mattel to get over their fear of offending Asians when they released another evil warrior, Ninjor. Now this guy seemed like your typical ninja dude, which was all the rage back then. That is, until you took off his removable hood to reveal his mug. Yikes. Well, I don't know if it was intentional on Mattel's part, given that Jitsu and Ninjor shared an Asian heritage. But when they eventually released Ninjor in the Classics line, he came with two additional accessories that the vintage release didn't have. The first one was obviously meant for Jitsu. It was an intricate rope belt that was a design callback to the 2002 Staction. The second one was an alternate unmasked head for Ninjor. But for some reason, it reminded me more of the demon-possessed head from the Jitsu Staction with the only issue being that it had a lighter complexion. So seeing as I had no intention of ever displaying an unmasked Ninjor, I opted to have the extra head painted to match Jitsu instead, and thus I got the Jitsu I preferred in the Classics line. So whether he is the unfortunate peaceful warrior magically forced to wage an evil war, or the future ruler of Snake Mountain, Jitsu has certainly gone a long way from the feared racial stereotype that he was originally perceived of as in the past. And as an Asian, I'm quite stoked about that. So is there anyone else who may have felt offended by any characters introduced in the Masters of the Universe line? I hope not, as it's all in the name of good fun as far as I'm concerned. Let's talk in the comments below. Tell me your story. Thanks for watching Stories from the Toy Shelf Redux. If you enjoyed this story, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to help me tell more. Until the next one.